I'm Carol Blair, one of the wellness educators here at Nature Time. Um, tonight we're going to do talk on I'm cancer free, now what? Sometimes after you've had something like this, it kind of hits you in the face, so what do I do now? People have come to me and said, all right, I want to stay this way, so what can we do? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So first the legal stuff. I'm not a doctor, so I just want to tell you this. Information presented here tonight is for educational purposes, is not intended to diagnose, prevent, treat, or cure disease, nor is it a substitution for your doctor's advice. Always check with your physician before starting any new protocols, and be especially aware if you are taking blood thinners or antidepressants before taking any additional supplements. So this is not necessarily the scale, but I saw a chart one time about cancer in the world, and we were off the chart, so I just had to point out some of that. China is the lowest, but they may not report all of theirs where we think. <laughs> Japan just a little bit higher, India a little bit higher, but look where the U.S. is. Seventh highest in the world, according to WebMD. Other developed countries like Canada, France, Denmark are similar. Poor countries like Ethiopia, Uganda have very little. So let's talk about why that might be. But first, what is cancer? If we look at it simply, it's an abnormal division or excessive division of cells that has gone unrecognized by the immune system. In other words, all of our cells have a time to live and they have a time to die, but cancer cells don't know enough to die on time, basically. The nucleus of the cell is what contains our DNA, and that's the programming for our body. When the DNA is damaged, that's when mutations occur. Some of the things that can cause damage to our DNA are heavy metals, chemicals, radiation, and even drugs. If you can't follow along, by the way, all these slides I've given to you in your packets. And if I run out of packets, we'll get you one later. I have a packet for everybody who signed up plus one extra, but sometimes people forget to sign up. Um, a cancer protective gene called P53 helps protect our DNA. Things that damage that P53 gene, P53 gene that um, promote mutation of it, are things like a high glycemic load, in other words, a lot of sugar, white flour, refined foods, and a diet that's high in omega-6 un polyunsaturated oils like corn oil and trans fats like in fried foods and Crisco, things like that. Things that, some of the foods that protect it, a lot of fruits, blackberries, cherries, both the sweet and the tart, black currants, dark grapes, not so much the green ones, but the dark ones, watermelon, pineapple, plums, kiwi, and then for vegetables, and I'm sure there are a lot more vegetables than this. These are just ones that I've seen in studies. Celery, parsley, basil, and also Brazil nuts are very protective. Brazil nuts contain a lot of selenium, and as you notice, those are the therapeutic nutrients that protect the genes. Selenium, resveratrol, quercetin, and NAC. You'll see a lot of these things popping up later throughout the presentation. So why do we have so much cancer today when 100 years ago there was very little? Don't you like my clip art with a guy putting the pesticides on our food? <laughs> there are over 4 billion pounds of pesticides used annually in the United States. Current law, law allows 350 different pesticides on the food we eat. Americans consume about a gallon of pesticides every year on their food. So I did this in our first presentation. We did a presentation a couple weeks ago on side effects of chemo and radiation. And so let's just pretend this is Roundup instead of water. And we put this in a little bit in the glass, and I'll just say to you, here, try this. Nobody's going to touch it because they know it's a toxin. Roundup is a potent toxin. And yet that's what we're getting on our food all the time, and we just don't see it. So if you don't see it, you don't think about it being there, but it's very, very toxic. Also, there are poor minerals from mostly nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, potassium-type fertilizers. Our food is shipped across the country where it loses many nutrients in its process because it's picked green and so on, and it's a long time in shipping. And we eat more processed foods today, like mixes and store-bought goods that really are basically empty calories. And then we have a new threat that really, we don't even know all the ramifications of this yet, but we're just a giant experiment. GMOs, genetically modified organisms in our food supply, and they have been linked to cancer. Irradiated food, a lot of people see the beef in the ground, the ground beef in the, food, in the market, and they think, oh, that's good. We won't get germs from that. Well, wait till you hear this. When, when food is irradiated, you get formaldehyde and benzene, both which are potent carcinogens. 
and it also accelerate, accelerates the growth of Aspergillus mold, which is an extremely potent and known carcinogen. If a whole food like an apple is irradiated, it must be stated, but if the apple is processed into applesauce or an orange into orange juice, they don't have to say so. There was a study at the University of Illinois Department of Medicine where they fed irradiated food to mice. 17% of the animals died or had to be killed for humane reasons because they couldn't even move they had such bad respiratory problems. There was another study at the Medical College of Virginia where rats were fed irradiated beef and all the male rats hemorrhaged to death within 34 days. So when they approved irradiated food, the FDA started with 441 studies, including the two I just mentioned. They narrowed the study down to 69. Of these, 32 showed adverse effects, and 37 had safety issues. Well, if my addition is right, that's 69. And yet, they approved this for consumption. So we still think the FDA is protecting us? If you do, I've got some, prop some waterfront property in Arizona, I'll sell you. Um, and then we have food additives. Nitrites, which are found in preserved meats such as ham, bacon, sausage, coal meats, are potent cancer-causing compounds. So if you are going to consume these foods, buy them organic without nitrites. They are available now. We have them here. Wegmans has them. Um, if you have some in your freezer you want to use up, use the garlic with them in that meal because that helps to deactivate it and take some vitamin C because that can help neutralize them in the stomach some degree. Many food colorings that are still on the market are linked with cancer and animal tests. Number blue, blue number one and two are both linked to cancer in mice. Red number three is shown to cause thyroid tumors in rats. Green number three has been linked to bladder cancer. And yellow number six has been linked to tumors of the adrenal gland and kidneys. But they're in lots and lots of foods. And our children are getting them a lot. Look at See the little picture of Kool-Aid up there? So then our water supply. It's chlorinated, it's fluoridated, both of which destroy the good gut bacteria, the probiotics. It's absorbed through our skin as well as the water we drink, so when we shower, we get it every day. Fluoride fills the receptor sites for iodine and is linked to thyroid issues as well as to cancer. In uh, animals, fluoride increases lead absorption in bones, teeth, and blood and I don't imagine we're much different. And vitamin D has been found to really be more effective than fluoride for cavity prevention anyhow. Chlorine affects our methylation detox pathways, which we're going to talk about a little later. And it's interesting that chlorine gas was used as a chemical weapon during World War I. And by the way, the Nazis used fluoride in the water in World War II to dumb down the prisoners so they'd be more compliant. It has long been known that chlorine in drinking water causes high incidences of bladder and rectal cancers, and it's now linked to breast cancer, too. Chemicals, chemicals, chemicals. <laughs> From our houses to our cars. There are 80,000 known chemicals on the market, and only 10% of them have been checked for safety. In our household, we have things like plastic storage containers, we have plastic wrap, we have plastic water bottles. The PCBs in this plastic are linked to cancer. So use a glass water bottle when you can. You've probably seen this if you've been in my office, this water bottle on my desk. I filter my water and bring it in from home in a glass water bottle. It's a lot safer than those plastic bottles. And avoid styrofoam if you're out in a restaurant and you have food left over. Don't leave your takeout in it. As soon as you get home, get it out of those containers and put it in a glass container. Very toxic. Avoid aluminum pots and pans. Aluminum collects in the brain. It pushes out iodine. It pushes out silica. And you can displace a little bit with iodine and, and a supplement called Biosil. Or silica is also an oatmeal and oat straw tea, things like that. But these heavy metals have uh, a long half-life in the body. The average home contains 3 to 10 gallons of hazardous materials. You can soak your non-organic produce in apple cider vinegar or veggie wash, and then be sure you rinse it. Uh, clean with baking soda, white vinegar, lemons. Um, add salt if you need to for more abrasion. Feed cleaner is probably one of the, the safest ones on the market. It's from Young Living Oils and it's organic and I really like that one. And be sure to wash all your new clothes before you wear them because they have formaldehyde, they have fire retardants and lots of other stuff. 
Your personal care products, anything you put on your skin is absorbed into your body, so remember that. Some of the known carcinogens in lotions, shampoos, soaps, and cosmetics include these, and this is just a very short list. I've just given you an example. Parabens, which are preservatives, which are very toxic. DEA is an ammonia compound used as an emulsifier, sometimes called cocomide DEA. Quaternarium-15 is associated with nose and lung cancers and leukemia, and is found in Johnson & Johnson's baby shampoo. And then, of course, you have polyethylene glycol, sometimes labeled PEG. That's probably so they won't think you know what it is, but um, that's a, an ingredient in antifreeze. It's also uh, known as Miralax. It does have a low toxicity, but the FDA only approved it for seven-day use. It's also in lubricating eye drops, new lasso, which is what they give to cancer patients, and lotions. I've put up here some of the products I use because people are always asking me. I try, all our products are rated between a one and a four. These are, this is a green step guide. If people want this, you can pick it up. But this um, labels, this rates our cosmetics and our personal care products. I look at it as one is a one step up from a drugstore product, two being two steps up, four being more, mostly organic, at least 70%, and then three being not necessarily organic, but well sourced. So you can pick that up if you want to. I don't use anything under a three. Okay, now we have to talk about diet, and I know some of you people were in my first session, and I'm, but I just think if we don't correct our diet, you're only going to get this much better. You really have to correct the diet. And one of the keys is to keep the diet low in sugar and white flour and refined foods because cancer feeds on sugar. Add fiber to bind with toxins, and make sure you drink plenty of water when you do. Um, some things to eat would be whole grains like oatmeal, quinoa, brown rice. I'd kind of avoid wheat as much as you can. I think gluten-free would be um, a good thing to consider because it's so hard to digest and or minimize at least. Eat at least five vegetables a day and a couple of fruits, especially berries and apples. The fruits that grow in our area have a much lower glycemic load than the fruits that grow in the south. They're much sweeter if you think about the mangoes, the bananas, the pineapples, all those things that grow in the south. They have a higher glycemic load than, the, than what's indigenous to our area. And when you can, buy organic. And why? Because, as we said, 80% of the pesticides are carcinogenic. The average American consumes a gallon a year. There was a Mount Sinai study in 2003 that showed that when a large group of individuals were tested for 200 different pesticides, 90 of them showed up in humans, 90 pesticides in our body. So the Dirty Dozen, which I'm going to show you next, and it's in your folder, these were tested after they were washed, by the way. So I would only buy these foods when they are organic. The only time I touch anything on this list that isn't organic is if I'm at somebody's house. <laughs> but other than that, I only buy these organic. Then this is the Clean 15, so you don't have to waste your money so much. Whoops, I did something here. <laughs> um, I did something here on this computer. Hold on one second. But the Clean 15 um, have low pesticide residue, so if your budget is limited, then avoid the dirty dozen and concentrate and save your money on these. Okay, what's going on here? Okay. All right, continuing on with the diet basics. Um, nuts, especially raw nuts, are very good for you. And they're fresh right now in the season. You'll see them in the stores, the fresh walnuts. You crack those nuts and they just taste so good. Um, but if you don't buy them fresh, make sure they're refrigerated. Uh, walnuts, pecans, almonds, macadamia, Brazil nuts, those are all really good nuts. Not so much peanuts. And not so much cashews, although if you can get them organic, not so bad, but most of the ones come over on the ships, they spray them on the ships for fungicides, with fungicides to keep the environments out. Um, Seeds all are good for you. Flax seeds, chia seeds, pumpkin, sunflower, sesame, and apricot. We're going to talk about flax seeds and apricot seeds a little bit later. Wild caught fish is really good for us. Unfortunately, like everything else, we've ruined our oceans and lakes and whatever. So I wouldn't eat it more than a couple times a week, and I would definitely eat it wild caught. Um, but even then, there are pollutants like mercury and PCBs in the water. Um, but not as much as some of the farm-raised fish. It's just very, very, very bad. Hormone-free, antibiotic-free, poultry, meat, and dairy. 
I don't know how many people are aware, but poultry, uh, chickens are fed arsenicals routinely. That fattens them up and it's like an antibiotic because they're not allowed to use an antibiotic. Um, but otherwise, like in meat and dairy, you get residual antibiotics and you get bovine growth hormone. Other countries won't even take our meat or dairy. Bovine growth hormone has been um, outlawed in Europe and Canada. We can't sell them our meat or our dairy. Uh, but yet we still eat it. Um, but the bovine growth hormone is basically fed to cows to increase the milk production. In 1989, there was a study in nutrition and cancer that linked it to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's also been linked to lung cancer and ovarian cancer. Beverages. Drink water. You know, so many people today are so used to consuming soft drinks that they don't even know how to drink water anymore. They say to me, what am I going to drink? You know, what do you think people drank 100 years ago? They drink water. Um, and if you don't like water, add something to it, like a little young living oil, peppermint or orange or lemon or something like that. A drop or two is all you need to flavor it. And that actually would have some therapeutic value. But just remember, not all essential oils are ingestible. The only young living is one of the few that I know that's ingestible. Drink green tea, a couple of cups a day for antioxidants and its alkalizing effects. This is especially important if you've been through chemo because it will help repair a chemo-damaged liver. It has a lot of antioxidant and polyphenols that help protect our DNA, which is what we talked about in the beginning. And there are a lot of anti-cancer studies on it, and it reduces the risk of lung, throat, stomach, colon, and pancreatic cancers. And there are some studies in your folder on that. But avoid the soft drinks. There's too much sugar, and definitely avoid the artificial sweeteners. Aspartame, also known as NutraSweet or Equal, is a chemical poison. It's 10% methanol, which is basically a paint thinner. It causes headaches and seizures in test subjects. It degrades to formaldehyde in the body. And interestingly, it was first developed as a very uh, successful insect poison for ants. Aren't you glad you've been using some of that? Animal studies show that aspartame can cause brain tumors. And brain tumors are definitely on the rise. It's been linked to several other cancers as well, and when it's combined with the nitrites that we talked about in the beginning with the bacon and so on, the risk increases. It also causes MS-like symptoms, depression, and seizures. And I did have a client that I talked about the first session that had aspartame poisoning, thought she had MS, the doctor diagnosed her with MS, and I told her to get off the soft drink. She was drinking a, um, a couple of six packs a week, I think, and sure enough, her symptoms went away. She didn't have MS. She just had aspartame poisoning. Splenda, also known as sucralose. The FDA approved Splenda after only two human trials of 23 people for four days. Migraines and seizures are among the reported side effects. It has been linked to bladder cancer. And one doctor told me that it's more chemically similar to DDT than it is to sugar, even though, say, even though they say it tastes like sugar because it's made from sugar. He says it's more similar, similar to DTT than it is to sugar after what they've done to it. But there are some natural, low-calorie sweeteners with benefits. Stevia reduces the blood pressure. It supports the liver. Um, and I know for a fact it reduces blood pressure because when I was putting it in my smoothie, I make a smoothie in the morning with like raspberries, blueberries, uh, some whey, you know, almond milk, whatever, and I put in some trace minerals, and I put in my biofilm, and it gets a little bit bitter because of that. So I was adding some stevia. My blood pressure went down to 100 over 60. But I was getting dizzy, um, so I knew it wasn't quite right. So um, stevita is a combination of stevia and xylitol. And xylitol is nice because it keeps bacteria and candida from adhering, and it's very good for preventing cavities for that reason. And some of the diet extras, juicing. I, I highly recommend juicing to anybody who's had cancer, and even if you haven't, because there are more nutrients in juice than you can possibly ever eat. And if you can't juice, consider a green food powder. Like um, I drink one every morning with Enhanced Organic Greens or The Perfect Food or Amazing Grass, one of those. Um, I put some over there, some of the ones that I like. And uh, they hide well in chocolate smoothies, too. Diet extras. I almost don't call a probiotic a diet extra because I think they're so important because 70 to 90% of our immune system is in the gut. If you don't have enough good guys in the gut, then you're going to lose the war, basically. So 
It may be necessary to replenish with supplements, especially if you've been on antibiotics uh, or chemo because they both kill a lot, and especially the antibiotic study because they're so strong. Look for about 15 billion a dose. If you're sensitive uh, or if you think you're very toxic, then start with a lower dose and work up. But you can also get good bacteria in fermented foods like yogurt, kefir, and sauerkraut. And if you're tired of swallowing capsules, you can just open up the capsule and dump it in or buy a powder. You don't really notice it if you dump it in yogurt. It's a good way to get it into children, too. Vitamin D. The National Institute of Health did a study with 1,100 IUs of vitamin D. That's not even a huge amount. Or a placebo for four years. All the subjects were 55 years and older and had been free of known cancers for at least 10 years. 60% decrease. There was a 60% decrease in their cancer risk compared to the group taking the placebo. It's one of the most inexpensive things you can do for yourself. Get your D level checked. It's really part of a simple blood test. Make sure it's at least 40 to 50. And I can't say enough about the cruciferous vegetables. There's a list of cabbage family foods in your folder. But all these foods have been found to reduce a number of cancers, including epithelial cancers, reproductive bladder, gastric, liver, and colon cancer, as well as non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. These foods help detoxify the liver and the gut. Cruciferous vegetables contain things that we're going to talk about a little later, indole 3-carbonyl, which is for phase 1 and phase 2 detoxification, calcium deglucurate, which is part of phase 2 detox, and sulforaphane, which is a potent estrogen metabolizer, which is part of your sulfation detox. Again, we're going to talk about those later. And stress is, a, is something that I think in this time urgent society, everybody is stressed today. And sleep is really vital. You can do some deep breathing. You can take, uh, drink some decaf green tea, which contains theanine. If you're really stressed, take a theanine capsule along with the green tea. You get a synergistic effect that way, and that will help uh, reduce your stress even more. Melatonin is a great sleep aid and has been shown in studies to have lots of anti-cancer properties. Um, Relora, which contains magnolia, uh, we talked about that in our first session, contains also anti-cancer properties. And nature's tranquilizers, calcium and magnesium, really, really important, along with the B complex. You'd be surprised people have come to me and said, I don't want to go on an antidepressant, what should I do? I get them on some extra calcium, magnesium, especially magnesium, a B complex, and some good fish oil, and amazingly, they don't need that tranquilizer they thought they needed. Well, um, if you first, if you were just starting, you might want to just start with magnesium. If you're if you're feeling depressed, that's where I would start with just magnesium. But I would say about 600 calcium and 4 to 600 magnesium. I like a closer one to one ratio rather than the two to one that we used to think was good. Um, and a good 50 B complex. I wouldn't go with 100 because your body can't absorb that much at one time. But if you need more, you can do 50 twice a day or cut that 100 in half. But salt lamps, that's the little round uh, sphere I have over there. That's from my office. They're very grounding and relaxing. You know, the air contains a lot of positive ions from electricity and cell phones and computers. And salt lamps turn them into relaxing negative ions like you get at the mountains or at the lake. Sometimes when we're on vacation, we think, you know, wow, that vacation was great, but some of it's really because we've been to a mountain or a lake or an ocean or something, we have all of these negative ions. And, of course, no talk would be complete without talking about inflammation because it's linked to almost every disorder, including cancer. Um, sugar increases inflammation in the body, so it is important that reduced sugar, and remember, white flour will turn into sugar in the body, pretzels, all that stuff, same thing. So reduce inflammation with a cup of ginger tea. You can cook with turmeric. You can drink green tea. All your antioxidants are helpful, uh, and especially with resveratrol and lipoic acid. So vaccines. Vaccines are very interesting. You know, they've had a place, and I think for a time they've been very useful, but they're getting way out of hand. I mean, children today have 42 vaccines before they're allowed to go to school. I mean, that's just insane, insane. And the, the shingles vaccine, the reason, we're, the reason now that we're getting shingles is because the kids are vaccinated for chickenpox. So a customer called me up and said, are you getting the shingles vaccine? I said, no way. He said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go hug a kid who has had chickenpox. <laughs> because if you've had chickenpox, you have the, the virus in your system. And when you 
are uh, get in contact with somebody with chicken pox, it will boost your system again. You'll never get the chicken pox, but that's why we're getting shingles. The kids aren't having chicken pox, so now we're getting the shingles from that virus that's still in our system. But the big thing, another big thing with vaccines is what they contain besides the vaccine itself, mercury, aluminum, formaldehyde, aspartame. Get on the FDA website and look it up. I mean, you'll be surprised. MSG is in some of them. Why? Why would you put MSG in a vaccine? I have yet to figure that out. But instead of the flu shot, we have something called the multi-strain flu. Um, it's in a little box over there to the left. It's put out by King Bio, so homeopathic. It has the very same strains that are in the flu shot. It's those strains that are given by the World Health Organization every year. And you just spray it in your mouth, three sprays, once a week. And then you don't get the mercury and the aluminum and all that. It doesn't last the whole season unless you keep doing it every week. But it works. Many of our customers use that. Don't you like my clip art on the mercury poisoning? <laughs> um, so I we're on the topic of vaccines, which contain all the mercury, and we get mercury in our fillings, those silver fillings in your mouth are 40 to 50% mercury. A lot of people don't realize that. And of course you get mercury from fish. So there's almost always frequent urination with mercury poisoning. And think about all the people today wearing Depends. I mean, our ancestors didn't wear Depends. They didn't have to wear diapers, you know? And usually the frequent urination is worse at night they're prone to constipation, and of course that makes the frequent urination worse because there's just not enough room in there for everything. They're prone to high blood pressure. There's anxiety, mania, and depression, hence the picture. <laughs> um, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis are part of this picture, and I know when my son went to college, he developed Crohn's. And, you know, the doctor said, well, he's stressed, and of course I'm sure that didn't help. But it was about two months after he had his MMR booster vaccine, which contains a lot of mercury. Multiple chemical sensitivities, allergies, Lou Gehrig's disease, MS, rheumatoid arthritis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. I mean, those are all part of this mercury syndrome. Another symptom is excessive perspiration and salivation. Now, again, mercury amalgams, which are those things in your teeth, are outlawed in Europe. And now Maine has outlawed them, but that's the only state as far as I know that's outlawed them at this point. So what to do if you think you have some mercury toxicity? First, remove the amalgams. There are, we do have good doctors here who can do that. There's a dentist, Dr. McGrath, who is very holistic, who knows how to remove them. You, can't, you shouldn't just go to your dentist and get them out because that can be even more toxic. Um, and there's a, another woman by the name of Blanche Gruby down in Pennsylvania who has removed some for, one of my customers had 15 and she wanted to get them all out at once, and she did it for her. In one day, she stayed overnight. She was very happy uh, with the results. Um, avoid the flu shots. Uh, again, we have that multi-strain flu. Uh, cilantro and chlorella together help detoxify mercury. Later, we're going to sample a drink we have called Popeye's Punch that has cilantro in it, and I thought you might like to see how you can put it in a drink and not really notice that it's there. Uh, mercury binds to uh, fat, so if you get some fat in the diet from good fats like avocados and coconut oil, olive oil, your omega-3s, that kind of thing, that's a good choice. Um, most of the mercury is excreted in the urine. That's why there's so much frequent urination. Your body's dumping it into the bladder and the, and the body's saying get rid of it so it doesn't get reabsorbed. Uh, it takes about three years to get rid of mercury um, and five years if it's in the central nervous system like if you have MS or Parkinson's or something like that. Um, you can, there are a couple of homeopathics that help, homeopathic mercurius. You don't do it often, just maybe once a week for a few weeks, like maybe six weeks. And homeopathic hepar salt is another one that can be good for that. And uh, probably you didn't realize that most of our prescription drugs are carcinogenic. 70% uh, of the drugs that have been tested have carcinogenic links, including sleeping pills, statins, and antibiotics. Statins and antibiotics have also been uh, known to cause, uh, there are studies recently that haven't been on the news actually, that they also increase diabetes. Um, but they don't require testing to see if the drugs are carcinogenic. And even when they are tested, they're not removed from the market even if they're found to be carcinogenic. Now this was a slide from Dr. Michael Murray. And the last paragraph is the one I really wanted you to know. Among patients prescribed hypnotic, hypnotic 
hypnotics would be things like sleeping pills, like Ambien, and Valium uh, for anxiety, lorazepam, diazepam, those kinds of things. The cancer incidence was increased for several specific types of cancer with an overall increase of 35% among the people who were prescribed the higher doses of these medicines. And then there's something called drug suppression syndrome. It is thought that many of these drugs can create some of the chronic diseases we have today. George Patuka says that drug suppression is a major factor in the alarming increase in chronic diseases in our societies. And Dr. Patel, who's a homeopath from India, stated that we need to remove some of the obstacles to recovery, which are coming up in our modern era of wonder drugs. Um, Manfred Bueller, uh, another homeopath, and I'm taking a course from him right now, says that a constitutional remedy would sometimes not act until the obstacle to cure, which is caused by the influence of a drug that was taken many, many years ago sometimes, when that obstacle was moved, removed, he could find the cure for lots of diseases. So let's talk about radiation exposure. Medical x-rays, dental x-rays, CAT scans, cell phones, especially smartphones, which are even worse, cell phone towers, high voltage lines, cordless phones, which by the way are worse than cell phones, nuclear power plants, our GPS systems, microwave ovens, I mean the list goes on and on. We are just a massive experiment today of all these things that our ancestors didn't have a hundred years ago. But let's talk a little bit about the microwave. In 1992, Stanford researchers discovered that microwaving baby formula destroyed most of the nutrients. Ninety percent of the disease protecting agents in mother's breast milk were destroyed when they heated it in the microwave after they pumped it. Russians tested food cooked in microwave ovens and found not only nutrient destruction, but there were actually some cancer-causing agents. I don't have a microwave. I got rid of my microwave a long time ago. And you know, you, you miss it a little bit in the beginning, but after a while, you really don't even notice it anymore. You just work around it. Um, you know, my little toaster oven actually works pretty well to heat things pretty quickly. The radiation studies were mostly done in Europe and Russia, of course. We don't do things like that in this country because, you know, you've got to follow the money trail. The German studies collected symptoms from 2,000 patients. And what they found, the doctors said that radiation opens the blood-brain barrier and disrupts the neurotransmitters, and then all the toxins that we talked about before can get in. All those heavy metals can get into the brain because the blood-brain barrier has now been opened. And they also found that there were more brain tumors after 10 years of heavy cell phone use, and there were more brain tumors on the side of the head where the cell phone was used a lot. Um, there's also more cancer and leukemia that was found within 20 miles of nuclear power plants. So be glad you don't live in Oswego. Some of the radiation syndrome symptoms are restless sleep, and of course, again, that's because um, our brain functions on electrical impulses, and now you've got these cell phones and all these things interrupting that. And the um, sleep apnea is another symptom. I see a lot of these first three or four things in, in my practice. Cataracts and glaucoma are very common these days. I mean, everybody over 65 practically has had a cataract operation. AFib, tachycardia, arrhythmia, all things I see a lot. Chronic recurrent headaches seizures, tinnitus, and then again, rage. Um, and if you think about it, I mean, look at all the school shootings and all these things, and who knows how many of these things play a role in it. I'm sure there's a lot more than just radiation, but it's one of the factors. Chronic fatigue, sudden organ failure. There have been incidents where people who have been very sick have had a heart attack right on the table having an x-ray. Um, and forgetfulness. People do not get well with continued exposure when I um, was doing some research for a Lyme presentation, um, there's a man by the name of Dr. Klinghart who is an MD and also a PhD who had Lyme disease. And he said that he had done all the antibiotics and couldn't get well and decided to go a more natural route and found some protocols. He said he cannot get some of his really sick people well until they get rid of the radiation exposure around them. He said it makes the bugs more virulent. So, 
So just a few thoughts about how you can reduce your exposure. As I said, either minimize or get rid of the microwave oven. Change back to some landline phones, especially the ones you use a lot, the phone that you use a lot, or the one in your bedroom. At least find a room like in your bedroom where you're spending eight hours to sleep and make that a good free room of radiation. Leave your cell phone in the car when you don't need it because even when it's off, it's still those, you know, those satellites are still up there and it's still drawing a signal. Um, there are some cell phone tabs that you can use to reduce the, some of the um, magnetic field. And I put a cell phone tab on my phone and on my computer phone. I gave one to my sisters. Well, I have one sister who uses a cell phone exclusively, and she said it used to get really hot if she was on it a lot. And when she put this on, she said that it doesn't get hot anymore. So apparently they do do some good. And they're only about, I think, $14 or something like that. We have a few of them here. Avoid the Bluetooth. <laughs> it's like putting an antenna to your head. And avoid wireless computers. Um, make your bedroom, as I said, as free as possible of the electromagnetic fields. If you're remodeling, consider doing a few things. Like if you need new siding, maybe use aluminum siding. Put on a metal roof, although sometimes I don't think they're the most attractive. But remember, we've got all those satellites up there. And the radiation will bounce off the aluminum and the, the metal. Metal screens on your windows, metal doors. Don't buy a car with a navigation system. You know, the, if you need a GPS, just use it when you need it. And don't buy a car with a built-in Bluetooth. Of course, I know some of you probably just bought one, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, then you can do some other things. If you can't do anything about that, do some of the other things on the list. And you could probably think of a lot more. Those are just a few I made notes on. Um, Christine Horner, who is an MD whose mother died of breast cancer, uh, she's a board-certified general plastic surgeon, and she decided to do some research on this. And she wrote a book called Waking the Warrior Goddess. She says that mammograms are incorrect 80% of the time. They lead to overdiagnosis and overtreatment. And she said these new 3D mammograms triple the amount of radiation. She recommends using thermography instead of mammography, but of course that's not covered by insurance. It measures the infrared heat emitted by your body, and it can detect changes in inflammation and or increased tumor flow, uh, blood flow, approximately 8 to 10 years before mammography can. There was a European study that was published in 2012 that in those people who had the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene were exposed to any diagnostic radiation before the age of 30, like a CAT scan, the risk of breast cancer increased by 90%. 90%. She suggests eating flax seeds. There are hundreds of studies showing that they protect and shrink breast cancer tumors. One patient that she talked about in her book ate three tablespoons of flax seeds daily plus a potent herbal antioxidant, and three weeks later the tumor had shrunk from 1.5 to 0.5 centimeters. Flax seeds are one of the highest lignin foods known. They block environmental estrogens from attaching to breast tissue. They block estrogen receptor sites similar to tamoxifen, but much, much safer. Tamoxifen has actually been declared a carcinogen by the World Cancer Organization many years ago, but we still use it. They block the aromatase enzyme in a way similar to Arimidex. Yes. Mm -hmm. It might be a little much. You might ask um, at some point if you eat those if maybe the medicine can be reduced. Ask your doctor about that. Liver is your most important detoxification organ. It manufactures about a quart of bile a day, and it's the bile that carries toxic substances out of the liver for elimination through your intestines. Fiber is needed in this process because fiber binds with the toxins. So if you have low fiber, the toxins get reabsorbed into your system. Some good fiber sources are oatmeal, which by the way contains a lot of beta-glucan, oat bran, quinoa, I would probably not do wheat as a source because most of it's genetically modified now. It has a lot of gluten. Um, sweet potatoes, winter squash, beans, legumes, apples, pears, berries. Practically all your vegetables and fruits, these are just some of the higher ones. That list is in your uh, folder. Phase one detox is often overactive 
in individuals with cancer. If you can drink coffee late at night and fall asleep, phase one may be overactive. Minerals like zinc and magnesium are needed for this. Turmeric can normalize phase one detox, and turmeric, which is also known as curcumin, is one of the most anti-tumor herbs known to man. Curcumin inhibits the transformation of cells from normal to tumor, and I think these studies are in your folder. Um, I had them at the last session. I think she added them to this folder, too. Uh, curcumin helps destroy mutated cancer cells. It inhibits the proliferation of cancer cells. It decreases inflammation, and it reduces angiogenesis, which means that that's what, blood, um, that's what cancer is used to increase the blood supply so they can spread. Journal uh, of Genes and Nutrition reported that curcumin modulates gene expression by affecting cell signaling. But you can't just put turmeric in a capsule. You can eat it in your food. It does require some um, fat, and that's what they do in India. They cook a lot with curry. Um, but if you're going to put it, buy it in a capsule, it has to be processed right. So look for 95% curcuminoids. I recommend Mariva by Thorne, and so does Dr. Heidi Poots, who is a, a very open-minded oncologist that we have here because that shows 20 times more absorption than regular turmeric. Uh, it's bound to phosphatidyl serving, which is a component of our cell membrane. There's another one called Kareka, and that has um, the curcuminoids, but it also has Vaswaya, which is a good anti-inflammatory. No, these are in capsules. These are the capsule ones, capsulated ones. But you can cook. You can cook it in your food, but in order to get therapeutic amounts like they do in India, you have to have a lot. I mean, they eat it just about every day. Now, if you have an underactive phase one detox, that's often displayed by caffeine intolerance. Sometimes a little bit of caffeine will keep people awake for, you know, even at night when they have it in the morning. Perfumes and fragrances may give you a headache, or you go into a newly remodeled building and you feel sick pesticides on the lawn, you can smell when other people can't, uh, certain product, cleaning products bother you. That's a sign that the phase one is underactive. So phase two detoxification is what moves these toxins out of the system. Phase two detoxification needs to be upregulated for cancer and downregulate phase one. Phase two enhances your heavy metal detox. It helps to remove xenoestrogens and chemicals and it aids in the repair of the uh, gastrointestinal tract. I keep hitting that. I don't know how I keep doing that. I guess I talk with my hands too much. Okay, milk thistle. Never increase phase one detox without increasing phase two. Milk thistle works on both those pathways, which is one of the reasons I like it so much. It supports the liver and even the kidneys to some degree. It reduces inflammation and bloating. It's been approved by the German Commission E, which is very similar to our FDA but a little more trustworthy in my opinion because they use a lot of herbs over there as well. In fact, a few years ago, there was a study done on um, Proscar and it was put up against Sal Palmetto and the Sal Palmetto actually won in the study as doing a better job with prostate issues. And in this country, they tried to pop the market. But in Germany, they sent out a letter to all the doctors and said, Sal Palmetto is a lot cheaper, use that, and if it doesn't work, you can try Proscar. Uh, vitamin B, C, lipoic acid, magnesium, and zinc will also work on both pathways. You notice the magnesium and zinc and the Bs keep coming up. So we're going to talk about some of these phase two, phase two detox pathways. There are several of them. I don't expect you to remember all this. I'm just trying to give you an overview of why this is important. Methylation is really, really important because it occurs in our cells every day, all day long, and it acts as a switch to either activate or deactivate oncogenes. So if you don't methylate properly, you can activate the oncogenes. Methylation dysfunction causes cells to proliferate wildly and to even stop communicating. Some of the things that improve your methylation are things called 5-MTHF, which stands for 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is basically folic acid at a bioavailable stage in the body, methyl B12, uh, P5P, which is um, B6 in its bioavailable stage, Again, that magnesium comes up. Uh, also choline and something called trimethylglycine. 
Now, almost all of those, with the exception of the trimethylglycine, are in the multivitamin called Enhanced Daily, which is why I often recommend that one to anybody who's had cancer. A couple of those, like the 5-MTHF and the methyl, no, the P5P, are in the jigsaw magnesium as well, which is a very nice magnesium. Another pathway, sometimes called sulfation or sulfoxidation. Um, if you have poor sulfation, you'll have adverse reactions to sulfite foods like red wine. Um, asthma reactions might occur after you've eaten in a restaurant because of food additives. And if you eat asparagus and you're, you have a strong odor of the urine, that's a sign that probably your sulfation detox isn't working very well. And if garlic makes you sick, that's another sign. So try to get a little garlic in your diet. Try to eat some asparagus. Those things are important for this pathway. To improve sulfation, the same things we've been talking about, the B vitamins, the magnesium, the zinc, and in this case, you also need molybdenum. And you need sulfur-containing amino acids like methionine, and acetylcysteine and taurine. You can get all of those in a whey protein shake, and I think whey protein shakes are very helpful. I use our Nature Time, I don't know if she put one out, but I use our Nature Time whey because it comes from New Zealand cows. Another pathway is called the amino acid pathway. And if you uh, were pregnant when you were younger and you had toxemia, that's an early warning sign that you have poor amino acid conjugation. There are quite a few amino acids that are required here, glycine, glutathione, uh, cysteine, methionine, taurine, glutamine, they're all necessary. And that's why, as I said, a whey protein shake has the most complete profile, uh, but veggie protein shakes would be helpful too. And intestinal toxicity will interfere with good amino acid conjugation, so again, you need that good gut bacteria, so take your probiotics. Glucuronidation is another pathway. Beta-glucuronidase is a liver enzyme that frees toxins and it frees excess estrogen, allowing them to get reabsorbed into the system. So by inhibiting this enzyme, detoxification can occur more readily. Um, it's very important in today's world. It helps detoxify food additives, hormones, carcinogens, prescriptions, and other drugs, including aspirin. Glucuronidation is related to good gut bacteria, meaning the probiotics we talked about earlier. Now, calcium deglucurate is helpful in this pathway. Calcium deglucurate is found in all those cabbage family foods that we talked about earlier, and it's also found in apples and oranges. Remember that old thing, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? And then, of course, the magnesium and zinc, again, two very deficient minerals. In case you're not aware, magnesium is the second most deficient mineral in our country. The first one is iodine. And zinc is probably right behind it because our soil is very depleted of zinc. And if it's not in the soil, it's not in the, it's not in the food. So those are really important. So you need both um, in your diet. B vitamins and probiotics, as I said, play a role in this glucuronidation. So you notice, again, the B vitamins, magnesium, and zinc keep popping up in these pathways. Another product I like is called Enhanced Estrogen Detox. I take one or two of these every day. This contains small amounts of DIM, which is just part of your phase one detox, the calcium deglucurate, which is the phase two detox. Um, if you need larger amounts of calcium deglucurate, if you think you're not, not if you don't, if you think you don't have glucuronidation, um, there is a supplement from Thorne that's available as a capsule. The milk thistle also is in this product. There's some broccoli sprouts in there, and the sprouts are a lot uh, stronger than just plain broccoli. And then there's also some turmeric in there. So I like it because it's, um, you know, much lower dose, of course, than, but you still need to eat those foods. You need that synergistic effect, remember. You can only fit so much in a capsule, so they're not high doses in there. So that's why I say if you need more calcium deglucrate, you just have to get it as a separate habit control. Um, I do want to mention that um, there are some homeopathic studies uh, done at the MD Anderson Cancer Center, and they confirmed the ability of several homeopathic remedies to induce apoptosis in breast cancer cell lines in the lab. Uh, two of those remedies were called carcinosin and phytolaca. 
which appears similar to the activity of Taxol. Um, these remedies are used a lot in India. And perhaps that's another reason because, you know, India, remember the chart was pretty low cancer, and they use a lot of curry, and they use a lot of homeopathic. Lymphomyosal, which I have been trying to get in. We used to carry this, and I've been trying to get it in because I've learned more about it. It's been used in India and Spain for melanoma, lymphoma, and a few other cancers. Um, some of the other homeopathics, chelidonium and lycoponium, lycopodium, have been used in liver cancer successfully, and ruta and hydrastasis have been used for lymphoma, and I think um, leukemia too. Some other helpful homeopathics. <laughs> a lot of our customers love the Com Forte. Um, that's over there, I think, in a little box. Uh, very relaxing. Helps kind of turn the mind down at night so you can sleep. So if you have these wandering thoughts all the time, uh, some nights I take six or seven of these. <laughs> Trying to calm my mind down. Two now, now or later, two more. <laughs> I'm still awake, two more. <laughs> um, Last night it took a lot. <laughs> As I said to some of you before, I'm not a public speaker. I'm more of a clinician. I'm, this is not my favorite thing to do. Um, if you're fearful, you can take aconitum. Uh, I should have taken that probably before I started here today. Um, but I gave this to my sister because she'd been in a car accident and she didn't want to drive. And every time she would drive, she would be like having everybody else who was driving on edge. Um, so I gave her aconitum before every time I'd go in the car with her, and she was a lot, lot better. Uh, we do have a cold and flu homeopathic that I like to keep in the house uh, for cold and flu works quite well. And if you feel like your immune system needs to be rebuilt a little bit, there's a formula put out by King Bio called Constitutional Enhancer. Uh, Dr. Frank King um, has formulated the King Bio line. I met him, and he's a brilliant man. Uh, he's a naturopathic doctor and homeopath and has done some wonderful things. There are ver some various uh, remedies for, specific remedies for various kinds of cancer. Um, I do have a list that I keep that I use a little bit with some people, um, and they have been helpful. And for detoxification, there's a very good product called Number One Detoxifier, which kind of does a whole body detoxification and you just put a few drops on your tongue before you go to bed at night, and that can be very helpful. And there's also one called lymph detox if you're having any lymph issues. So why cancer today? I think we answered some of those questions. But what I'd like you to do is think back to how our ancestors lived. You know, they lived closer to the land. They had fewer toxins. They didn't have pesticides and all that. They didn't have vaccines. Probably the only vaccine they had back then was uh, smallpox. Um, they didn't take prescriptions, or rarely. They didn't take over-the-counter drugs. By the way, in case you didn't know what Tylenol or acetaminophen has been responsible for more liver transplants than any other drug, and it's over-the-counter. Um, and, of course, they didn't have radiation to speak of at all. Pardon me? Acetaminophen, another name for Tylenol. Mm -hmm. is responsible for more liver transplants than any other drug. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are lots of other cancer treatments out there, and if you've had cancer once already and you're worried about the recurrence, you might want to explore some of these before anything happens. Um, I know a man who had immunotherapy at Roswell Park at least 25 years ago. He had lung cancer. He was in his 60s, either 65 or 67, something like that. And he was the father of a friend of mine, and um, he didn't want to take the chemo because the su success rate was so low. So he went to Roswell Park, and he had this immunotherapy, which was an injection. Um, and I think what they did, if I'm not mistaken, they took some of the cells out of his body and made it an immune, like a vaccine out of it. And so that way the immune system is built up to destroy the cancer. And he recovered very well. He lived another 20 years and he died of something not related to lung cancer. Uh, I think he was like 87 or something when he passed away. Uh, we do have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber here in Syracuse. Uh, you know, cancer lives in primarily an anaerobic environment, meaning 
um, without oxygen. So going into a hyperbaric oxygen chamber can be very helpful. I even had some people in the Lyme group who said they had been in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber but when they tried to use the one here that's in the oncology group, they wouldn't let them use it for some reason. They said it was only for the cancer patients. Um, Dr. Heidi Poots here in Syracuse does provide vitamin C therapy. That's pretty new in the last uh, year or two. And then, of course, there's the controversial Laetrile, also known as B17 or amygdalin in Russia, which is from apricot seeds. You need about one kernel for every 10 pounds of body weight. Now, these can be ground up and they can be mixed in food. They do taste a little bit bitter. But for maintenance, people just eat a couple, maybe up to five a day. Um, polyurga, and I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing that right, but that's been used in Germany. It's a porcine spleen extract. I got this information out of a book called German Cancer Therapies. Um, it's used by injection in Germany, but I guess it is available in tablets now. Uh, it's a tiny... They're tiny protein molecules called peptides that act like universal regulators to stabilize the cell and the immune system. Graviola, uh, you've probably heard about. It's a small evergreen from the rainforest. It's been studied for leukemia and lymphoma and I think maybe even prostate cancer. And of course, mistletoe, uh, which is known as homeopathic viscum album, is what Suzanne Summers used for breast cancer. And um, I don't know if you have ever read any of her books or anything, but when she started the alternative therapies, her doctors didn't like it, that she was doing that. She went abroad and had her therapies. And then later, um, she went to her doctor, and her doctor told her her breast cancer had spread throughout her body. And she was, of course, devastated, but was smart enough to get a second opinion and a third opinion, and she didn't actually have cancer at all. So I always say, get a second opinion. Um, other, can other cancer treatments include carnivora, uh, which has been used in an offshore clinic. There's a website there. Um, it's from the juice of the Venus flytrap. It modulates the immune system and has been used successfully in chronic lymphatic leukemia, chronic myeloid leukemia, sarcomas, geoblastomas, brain tumors, as well as AIDS, ulcerative colitis, and multiple sclerosis. There's something called Rana Pipins extract, was a, which has been used in Germany for pancreatic cancer. I've never seen that supplement here. I don't know. It may be available. And um, there's a clinic in Costa Rica that's run by Dr. Gary Young. I don't know if this is open to people here or not. Um, I asked a woman that I know who sells Young Living Oils, and she w intended to come tonight, but her brother had a brain cancer, and when he had his last radiation treatment, he died of a stroke. So... She couldn't make it. So I don't know for sure if that's true, but I put it in there just for explora exploration. But educate yourself on some of these things because knowledge is power, and if you plan ahead, you don't have to make these last-minute critical decisions. So there are a few important supplements that I think um, are good to consider in prevention. Um, the multivitamin that I mentioned earlier, the Enhanced Daily, that has all those methylation factors with the 5-MTHF, the magnesium, the Bs, the choline, and the D. Um, but take extra D if you need it. If you've had your levels checked and you're low, you want to keep them at least between 40 and 50. On the other hand, you don't necessarily want them 90 or 100 either. You know, the range goes from 30 to 100. But we don't really know the long-term effect of keeping them up at 90 or 100. We've never had them that high before. So kind of stay in the middle. Uh, that's a pretty safe range. Um, the enhanced antioxidant I take every day. It has resveratrol in it. It has quercetin, grape seed, grape skin, has some turmeric, has some CoQ10, some zinc and selenium. There's no magnesium because you can only fit so much in a capsule in a, and magnesium is a pretty large molecule. Um, but I like that supplement a lot. Um, liver support, uh, like milk thistle, is very important, as I said. That's both phase one and phase two detox. So if you don't know where to start and you want to detox, that's a safe supplement. I always take a probiotic. Um, especially if you've had cancer or if there's cancer in your family because remember all the things it does that we talked about earlier um, metabolizes estrogen, helps us make vitamin Bs and things like that. And 70 to 90 percent of that immune system is in the gut. And always take a high EPA, DHA fish oil. 
So let's review a little bit. I know I've given you a lot of information, and a lot of this I just wanted you to have as an overview. And um, but I would say review the notes and go through and try to take break it up into categories and try to do one little thing um, in each category. Like do one thing to reduce your radiation exposure. Like uh, maybe change the landline phone in your bedroom or to a landline phone in your bedroom. Um, or the phone you use the most. If you're on the phone lot, like I'm on the phone lot. I have three sisters in Florida, one in Indiana. I have two sons who live out of state. One, well, one is up north and one is in Indiana. So I'm on the phone a lot. I talk, they call me almost every day. I'm on the phone for 40, 45 minutes, practically on a daily basis. And I have had a cordless phone. And believe me, it's going. I'm getting a landline phone. Um, do one thing to detoxify, whether you're juicing, whether you want to add a green drink, you want to add some milk thistle, you know, whatever it is. But just take one thing and do it. Do one thing to improve your diet, even if it's just eating one more vegetable or a piece of fruit every day if you haven't been eating a piece of fruit every day. And do one thing to reduce your toxic metal exposure. For instance, if you eat a lot of chicken, make sure it's organic because chicken is full of arsenic. Arsenic is fed to chickens routinely to fatten them up so they can go to market quicker. <laughs> and it's also to act like an antibiotic because they're not allowed to feed them antibiotics. But they're allowed to feed them arsenic. These are some books to think about. Um, Prevent and Treat Cancer with Natural Medicine by Michael Murray. He's my guru. Beating Cancer with Nutrition by Patrick Quillen. The German Cancer Therapy, which is where I got some of the information I presented earlier by Morton Walker and The Cancer Industry by Ralph Moss, a PhD, and Politics and Healing by Dan Healy, a former New York State legislator. And there's another book, and I forgot to add it here. It's written by Donald Yancey, Y-A-N-C-E. I listened to him speak one time. He's very knowledgeable about cancer. Hi, come on in. We have some samples of... Um... Okay, good. We have some samples of a drink with cilantro in it from our cafe, and I thought you might like to try it, so she made up a nice batch for us. Um, I want to tell you, too, that Marilyn Edwards is trying to start, to start a cancer support group. She's a healing touch practitioner. She's also an RN and a certified social worker. Her phone number is there. There are some bookmarks on the table up there if you want to get one and pick it up with her name and number on it if you're interested. And again, for anybody who came late, I have to do the legal thing. Um, the information presented here is for educational purposes, is not intended to diagnose, prevent, treat, or cure a disease, nor is it a substitution for your doctor's advice. I am not a doctor. I just want you to know that. So always check with your physician before starting new protocols, and be especially aware if you are taking blood thinners or antidepressants, especially those if you're taking any before starting any additional supplements. I do offer free consultations. They're a half hour. And you can call the store at 488-6300 and ask for an appointment with me. Um, or you can email me at carol at naturetime.com and we can set something up. The appointments are free. They typically last about a half hour. But if you've had cancer or you have a long history or have a lot of medicines or whatever, you can ask for a one hour appointment. It might take a little longer to get in, but I do offer that. And that's it for today.